Okay, so. Good morning, good afternoon. So, the, this week, I will, uh, you will have a lecture with, with me, so we'll, you will see me either both here in the classroom and in the lab. Um, next week we will, uh, for, for a while, get back to Professor Corno during the lectures and me for, for the lab. Uh, but this week, we are going to start speaking about evaluation. Uh, in particular, between today and uh, next, um, and in two days, we are going to cover everything you need to know about heuristics evaluation. That is something that we are going to ask you to do uh, for milestone two in the lab number four. Um, right, so we are moving a bit along with our process and our uh, and the things that we are um, describing, right? So you, we, we covered up to this moment uh, observations that are here. You remember observations. You also remember this picture. You already have seen this picture quite a lot. I think that this is the last time we show you this one, but this is give up good picture, not perfect, but a good picture uh, on the pillars for human-computer interaction. And also most of the things that we covered uh, during the course, we'll cover during the course. So you already have seen observation, need findings, requirements, and you also sp have spent some time realizing and speaking about prototypes, paper prototypes, wireframe, you are going to do an interactive prototypes, etc. What we are missing here, you also have a, a bit, spoken a bit about theories, guidelines, um, a, a processes, etc. So we are covering quite a lot of these three first three pillars. And now we are going to move and start speaking about the fourth pillars of this uh, building. Mm -hmm. To, to build a successful user interface that is evaluation. And evaluation will consist of mainly two parts. Uh, one will be controlled experiment and usability testing that are here in this uh, pillar, not in, in yellow. And what is the goal of today and next week, uh, sorry, this week is this expert review. Uh, which is a kind of evaluation in which you have not your target population evaluating a graphical user interface, an interactive system, whatever, but you will have experts giving recommendation, reviewing your, reviewing a user interface. And this expert review is built, also built upon the guidelines some guidelines, some documents, some principles, so that experts have something practical to use for doing their evaluation. Hmm? So this is uh, the general picture. In particular, also as a recap, we know, we should already know, how to generate design solution. Hmm? We can generate design solution with uh, need finding to extract needs, we can generate uh, user interfaces. Let's speak about graphic user interfaces with guidelines by taking into consideration principles, theories, etc. What we don't yet know how to do it is, is how to evaluate the design that we generated according to the guidelines, to the principle, to our creativity, to, our, to the needs of our users, et cetera. And this evaluation, as I said before, will be done in two set, can be done with two set of tools different. The first tool is one, this one, the first bullet list here, 
It's the expert review and the heuristics. Again, expert providing their structured opinion on your graphical user interface, if we speak about a graphical user interface. And then there is another, other two set, another set of tools uh, that are usability testing and control experiments that we will cover towards as the last topic of the course. So we will cover this as the last topic of the course, and they will be object of the milestone number four, mm, that is the one that you have to deliver by the exam. And these two, usability testing and control experiment, differently from the expert evaluation, will involve your target population. So we will go back to the user that you have interviewed, observed at the beginning if you are speaking about your project. So the key difference here, there will be some methodological difference, but the key difference is that expert review and the heuristic will be done by expert, while the other two will be done not by the expert, but the possibly actual user of your uh, prototype or your system or your interface. Hmm? But again, today we will speak about expert review, particularly after a bit of introduction about what is evaluation. Hmm? So we spoke a lot about the prototypes, we spoke a lot about many different things. Uh, we will start today speaking about evaluation, then, as I told you, we will speak again about evaluation uh, in the last weeks of the course with usability testing and um, controlled experiment that are more a scientific way to do experiments, so with statistics, with hypotheses, and something like that. Um, and in the middle, just to give you a picture of how the course will unfold, in the middle, between this week and the very last weeks of the course, there will be clearly other weeks, we will cover other topics that are not part of the process. Mm -hmm. So the process is mostly done. We have gone through lead finding, prototyping, evaluation, and we will complete with evaluation later on uh, this year, the beginning of the next year. And in the middle, we will speak about something that is not related with the graphical user interface, because we will focus mostly as a foundation on graphical user interface, but we have, as human, many other senses and possibility to interact that are not only our sights and our eyes. So we also have a look at, at this other way of interacting, for instance, by voice, with some also practical example, if, we, if it's possible, if it's technically possible in that case, and uh, also other you know, way of thinking, guidelines, other things that apply not to graphical user interface. And that will be uh, the part that we start uh, after, during next week, I suppose. Mm -hmm. So next week, we, we will have a, a one lecture with Professor Korn about heuristic evaluation and visual design and exercise on putting together the visual design principle you have seen and the heuristic evaluation we are going to see today and on Thursday, and uh, next week we will start this other part uh, that will, again, uh, complete the course with the uh, evaluation on the other, on this other perspective, on the user perspective. Uh, but in short, brief introduction to evaluation. What is evaluation? Well, the, the formal, let's say, definition is written in slides. It's to say that the evaluation tests the usability, functionality, and acceptability of an interactive system. Where you can clearly define or expand these three concepts in many ways. So usability could also be uh, accessibility, could also be usefulness, could also be you know, the capability of being used by uh, other people. Mm -hmm. But as a general term, it's focused on usability, functionality, and acceptability as a big, three big words. Where clear acceptability, well, usability and functionality should be clear up to now, but acceptability could be the degree of which a user interface, a system, a portion of user interface or a portion of a system is acceptable and is accepted in the life, in the task that the user is going to do. Maybe it's perfectly usable, maybe it's perfectly functional, but is not suitable for a specific task or a specific process in the real world 
in which this interface is located. Hmm? And this testing of the usability, functionality, accessibility is done according to various moments and criteria. Hmm? You can evaluate different things using different techniques at different design stage. If you have a paper prototype, you can do something. If you have a sketch, you can do something. If you have the final product shared in the world, let's imagine a company hmm, that release a software, that release a mobile application, that release a website, you clearly can do other things for evaluating your that system, that application. Hmm. Clearly, the evaluations of different tools, different instruments according to design stage, and we will see them in a bit. Uh, you can also have different goal to evaluate. Maybe you are just interested in usability. Maybe you're just interested in catching the, the biggest errors. Or maybe you are interested in doing a comparison between two version of your interface or two different version of an application, like your application and the application of your competitor if you are a company. So you want to evaluate which one is better, which one is the best, if possible, among the two. So you can have different goals, and you can also have different initial goal for your evaluation, where you want to, which tools, which instrument you want to use to deliver that goal, to reach the, that objective. And clearly, alongside the different usability dimension, we have seen, you have seen a lot of usability dimension, during the course, so one, some, some ways more related to one dimension, others to other dimension. And I would say before, all of these is according to a range of different techniques that again, heuristic evaluation is one of that, usability testing is another one, um, and a control experiment is another one, but actually uh, surveys that you already have seen in mid finding could be another one you could do a survey to evaluate some aspect of your application. Maybe you put a video of your application, a video prototype in a survey, some screenshot in a survey, and you can collect information to evaluate some aspects of your application through a survey. Hmm? Or you can mix a usability testing with an interview for which you are collecting more qualitative information about that. Hmm? So even the things that you have seen and practices up to now could be useful for evaluating uh, a user interface and observation. You are going to observe some people using the interface and you can not only learn the needs, but if you, it's your user interface, you can also learn how they use it and which are the main problems just by observing. So clearly, as in it finding each of that as different goals, uh, different objectives, uh, different criteria and different things that you can learn from all this technique. Hmm? Again, an observation is very different from a survey, and you learn different things with an observation and with a survey. Hmm? Um, the, the idea, however, of evaluation is the one that is written in the last line of this slide. The main goal should be for of any evaluation uh, should be to identify and correct issues as soon as possible. So the, the idea behind that is that you should evaluate your system, your prototype, your application as soon as possible. And not just in the end, not just at the beginning, but at different time during the development and the design of the uh, prototype or the system, whatever. And this is also helped by the prototyping based process that we have show you and that we are, let's say, forcing you to, to adopt for, for the lab and for the project. Because you have artifacts that are incomplete by definition each step and then you can also evaluate those artifacts. And we, again, are also asking you to do this with the heuristic evaluation in two weeks in which you are going to evaluate your, well, someone else is going to evaluate your two paper prototypes, physically paper prototypes and receive an evaluation on that so that you can identify and correct issues already in this paper-based prototype before developing the 
the next version, the interactive version, the version in code of your uh, prototype. Hmm? So evaluation is something that, in sum, uh, you can do in different moment with different goal, getting different information, using different technique, but should be done as often as possible and as soon as possible. So which are these main techniques, these many approaches? Here are synthesized in these four bullet point, black bullet point, uh, that are actually not really exclusive one another, but they more represent uh, different aspects of the evaluation. So for instance, the first one, say where the evaluation may take place. The evaluation may take place in the lab, in an environment that is structured, in which I put my paper prototype, I put my user interface, my mobile application, and I ask people to come in that room for which I have full control of what happens in the room because I, I am in, in the lab, I'm setting up the environment for the person to come. If I want a noise environment, I can build up a noise environment. If I want a quiet environment, the same. If I want to have one person in the room, I can have one person in the room. If I want to have 30 person in the room together, Maybe not, but I can. Hmm? So you have full control on the space in which the, on the context in which the, uh, the evaluation will take place. And this is in the lab. The other place in which uh, the evaluation can take place is clearly not in the lab, not a structured environment, but in the field. That means in the real world. Hmm? Uh, and this is, Challenging, more challenging than asking people to come here on this desk and try my, let's say, paper prototype, because you should have something that can be used in the real world, and you will clearly have longer evaluation. Hmm? You can ask a person to be here and do the evaluation for 10 minutes, one hour. If you're going to release a mobile application in the real world, you can also have data collection and analysis for one month, for three months. So the kind of information that you get from that is really different from the in-lab study. So to be clear, they are not one versus the other. They are different places in which different kind of evaluation can take place, and you have benefits and problems for each of them. So if you want to reach a lot of people, and if you, if you, if you are doing, I don't know, um, a running application to track running, I know that I always use running as an example, but there is no a, a clear way, a clear motivation. So if you want to do a running application that tracks running, it's, it's hard maybe to, to experiment, to evaluate all the track, the tracking functionality of running in a lab, in a room, because you are fixed here, you cannot go running around. And even if you can go running around the room, it's not the same as running in the real world for, for a lot of reasons, technical and not technical reasons. Uh, so if you can release that in the real world and ask 100 people to install your application and go running for three months as they do normally, but using your application, you can collect a lot of information. You can understand a lot of things about your user and your application. And you can also discover a lot of bugs that you won't discover, but this is another part of the story, clearly. So you see, for that case, the in-the-world evaluation is better, but you should also have for in-the-world evaluation um, something that is more ready, because you are going to have one person installing, an 100 people installing the application on their own smartphone. So they should be ready to to support that, not crash after three seconds. While in the lab, you can have the same application that after one hour stop working, but it's not a problem because the test is just 15 minutes. So if after one hour stop working, I can reinstall the application, it's everything is fine because you have another person after one hour. So pros and cons. For some things it's better, or at least for, yes, for some application, for some system, it's better to have first a laboratory study, for others is more suitable, and in the field evaluation, for others it would be good to have both, and you'll learn different things 
according to the place in which you do the, the study. Mm -hmm. And then the structure of the study in the lab or in the field could also be quite similar mm -hmm. uh, because maybe you have the same instruments uh, and the same information, maybe collected in a different way, but clearly there are environment and contextual differences that are really different from the, for the results and for what you can learn. Uh, another aspect is involving user, hmm? either in the lab or in the field, depends. Uh, that is the more empiric evaluation. So you can have experimental methods, that the one that we are going to see later in this course. But you can also have observational and query methods. Again, surveys, interviews, observation, observational methods, observation. Hmm? So the ethnographic observation could be also used for evaluating something not only for getting information, getting needs. And all of these could be formal or semi-formal or totally informal. So think about the interviews. This is also a recap. The interviews could be structured, in which you prepare everything, totally unstructured, in which you go wild, and semi-structured, in which you have some question already pre-made and some question that you came up while doing the interviews or speaking with people. So the same range can apply to other things, other different things. Hmm? More formalism, less formalism, and something in the middle. Then there is, let me skip this, this one, then there is the automated evaluation. The automated evaluation is something that we will not cover, uh, and it's something for which you need a complete, final, ended software application. Why? Because it's about software measures. It's about simulation. It's about applying mathematical formula for applying some models and get information from something that is actually running and, and it's operating. Um, so this could, also, could be done by us at the end of the course, but at the end of the course, there is also the end of the semester. So we are not to cover this. And this is especially good for low level issues. Like, oh yes, this button is, should be three pixels on the left. Hmm? Or the time that the user is clicking this or doing all this process is double the time that I have imagined, I need to cut time somewhere. Hmm? Because you are on, on the real machine, you are on, on, the, on the software, so you can collect information more precisely than you can do in any other context because you can have a computer doing the calculation. Hmm? So playing models. Uh, at playing slow, etc. And finally, there is the expert evaluation that is the goal for today and next, the next lecture, uh, for which here are listed four different things, um, but they are not really so different one from another. Hmm? So there is analytic methods, the heuristic evaluation, and the cognitive walkthrough that we are going to see now is an analytic method. Uh, is an analytic method. Um, the review methods also, they are also review methods because there are some, some people that review an application using that methods. Uh, so it's more related to who is the, the person that is doing the, the evaluation. Uh, then we have heuristics. Heuristics per se are not a methods. Heuristics are more like guidelines, are more like principles. So a list of things to check, mm -hmm. a checklist in a way say yes, this apply or not, and how it is applied. Hmm? And we are going to see 10 heuristics, but you can, you already have seen the eight golden rule of Ben Schneiderman. That, all, that also, those also could be applied as heuristics if you want. Hmm? We are going to see the traditional heuristic evaluation with the normal heuristics that typically are applied in that, in that process, but Actually, the heuristic evaluation is the evaluation of something according to some principle, to some guideline, to some checklist, to some, something to check with. And you have to be an expert to understand the heuristic and to uh, be able to apply them. You cannot be a random person uh, taken from the corridor. Mm -hmm. And then you have model-based methods that are, again, expert, but uses some model, well-defined model, to evaluate your, um, your prototype, your system, your whatever, and this is something that we are not going to cover also. So we are going to speak about two things, uh, 
in this lecture, one before the risk evaluation, that is the cognitive walkthrough, that is another analytic method for expert. And it's a technique that we, we show you, we are not going to ask you to apply, but we show you because it's very, very simple, uh, but it's also very, very time consuming. Um, so pros and cons, but given that it's simple, it can it must be easy to, to, to show you. Um, so what is the cognitive walkthrough? As the name say, is a walkthrough of a user interface or interactive system from a cognitive mm, human perspective. So it's, by definition, a step-by-step -step revision of a sequence of action to perform a given task. So if this is not totally clear, let's go on. So what is the idea? Well, the idea is that you have a system, an application, and that um, you have some task for this application. And you have some action to do that task. So the task is going through all this presentation. The action is pressing the right arrows to move or clicking on the mouse to move. So the task is going through the presentation, the action is clicking the button. Uh, in this case, it's just one action that accomplished the task, but could be also made by more action, the single step. So you have a sequence, you have a task that you have to define for the specific application, you have a sequence of action for the task, and the examinator is there and examine with care each single step, each single action for each single task. So it's simple because you have something to do and some action to do, but it's time consuming because the evaluator should pick, okay, task number one is this, first action. Okay, let's think about this first action. Let me ask four questions about this action. Then I can do that. And then next action is this one. Okay, other four questions to answer before doing the next step. And so it's, again, it's simple because it's process and some questions that the evaluator is going to answer, but it's also long because you need, again, to answer four questions for every single step that you are going to do in a user interface. So if you have five tasks, each of them from 10 action, and for each action you spend five minutes, it's five minutes per 10, per five. So not really short at the time. And, but again, it's simple because you have clear rules, nothing complex to do. You don't have to know heuristics guidelines, you just have to apply things and answer some specific questions that are always the same. And this is the cognitive walkthrough is particularly suited for evaluating systems or application designed for learning by exploration. So it's, it's good for, I don't know, website, user application that you never seen before, that you have never seen before. So it's the first time that you see that and you have to explore, you have to learn how to use, but you don't have a manual that if you go there, then this happens. You have, you imagine to open, I don't know, YouTube, hmm? and first time user, and somebody's asking you, upload a video. Where do you want to, yeah, where do you click in the many things that appear on the, on the user interface of, or the website of YouTube? Hmm? Or get to the statistics for your last, latest uploaded video. Where do you want to go? Hmm? So it's, it's exploration. You learn how to find things because the first time you need, you go there and uh, actually look for this thing and at the moment that you find that the statistics are in that portion of the screen, in that page, you know, you have learned that the statistics are there, so next time you are not going to explore to find the statistics, but you already know where they are. So it's good for this kind of system more open, let's say, and for novice users, for first time users, not for expert of YouTube or expert of a system, which are the other kind of, of, of system that are not designed for learning by exploration, but well, you can imagine a form-based uh, process 
which you have one page in which there are some questions and then a the next button. And then you go, you cannot do anything else that go to the next page because there is nothing else, just a form to fill and the next page to, to fill. So if you have a more structured process, maybe some management based uh, application could be more suitable for that. You have, you have a static process, a structured process. It's difficult hmm, to explore because it's nothing really to explore. You just have one page and a button, and then the next page you will have the same page or a very similar page, another button to go over to, get, to go to the next page. Hmm? So for those things, it's, this is not really helpful for apply because it's too simple hmm, as a process from an interaction point of view. Maybe the information that are asking are complex, but from the task and the action that you have to do, it's simple. So how the walkthrough works. What do you need? Well, you need, first of all, a specification or a prototype of the system or the real system also. But it can work also with a prototype, either a paper prototype or an interactive prototype. You need something hmm, so that the, you need something that is usable, hmm, that can be used by the, the expert. Hmm. So just not just maybe word. Uh, then you need to have a description of the task or the tasks that the typical user or the, the user that you want to, to experiment with uh, should do to perform uh, some action on the system. Again, let's use the YouTube example. Upload a video. This could be a task. Open YouTube and go there. This is the video. Upload it. This is a task. And then you need... And then you can replicate this task for how many tasks you, you need. And then for each of these tasks, you need a complete written list, list of the action needed to complete the task. So for instance, I don't know how many are familiar are you on YouTube and uploading, but you have to click. Once you go on the YouTube page, you have to click in the corner on the right top on the camera with a plus that open a pop-up for dragging or uploading the video from the computer that open another window through which you insert, insert the information about the, um, uh, the video, the description, the tags, the location in which it was registered, the date in which it was registered, if it's something suitable for minors or not, if you want to publish now, keep it private, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And after this form, you will probably end up with the video uploaded if it not, doesn't generate error. So this is, you have to write this list of actions. So click on this button, in the pop-up that happens, drag and drop the video from your desktop, or click the button for, that will open another window to select on the disk the specific uh, file that you want to uh, upload, and the file will be named something.mp4. Then click OK, and then, all of these are separate action for co accomplish this task. Hmm? So you have a task, upload a video, successfully upload a video. A list of these actions written hmm, so that you can give them to the evaluator. And then you should also provide with the expert hmm, that is doing this evaluation an indication of who the user are. Hmm? So this person should think like one of these users. So he's evaluating not on, maybe also, but also not on his own experience and perspective, but he needs or she needs to imagine to be somebody else with a different experience, with a different knowledge. So he needs to be, this person needs to be an expert also to be able to do this imagination exercise. In terms of experience and knowledge. So experience may mean experience with that specific system or experience with computers in general or experience with technology or experience with that specific task. Maybe I've never seen this application, but I am super expert on video recording or I've used a lot. I never used YouTube, but I used Vimeo. So I know how to upload a video on other platform, but not on YouTube, because I never did that. So this is a sort of profile 
of the user that uh, sort of persona that the, the, the expert needs to in medicine at risk. And the knowledge, is this proficient with the smartphone, with computers? Hmm? He knows how to click or to tap. He knows what it means, drag and drop. Hmm? From that level, that seems very basic, basic to most complex level, it depends also from the application. If you're doing an application for doctors and you in hospitals and you recruit me, then I need to do an extra effort to, be, to have the knowledge to cover specific measurement and specific terms of the medical sectors. Because maybe that application should be specific and using the right term for doctors because this is something for doctors, not for general users like instead of YouTube. So you, you can have expertise and knowledge that are different things. And the expert doing the cognitive walkthrough should try to medicinate and think to be that person while doing the uh, walkthrough. And what mean that doing the walkthrough? Means that this person has, let's say the paper prototype, just to make an example in front of him, and as the task, as the written list of action, and for each step hmm, on the list of action, he needs before doing that, or while doing that, depends on the question, ask, ask himself and note down the answer to these four questions. So, the first one, the first one is probably the most complex to understand. Is the effect of the action the same as the user goal at that point? So again, let's imagine YouTube. Hmm? You probably, do you have present YouTube in, in your mind, the home page of YouTube, how it is done? Yes, if you don't, if you have a computer in front of you, open YouTube for a while, look at the home page. Um, so, uh, and let's take, take the task of uploading a video. So you have, uh, uh, we know that you have a button that is uh, a picture of a camera with a plus in the corner on the top right of the screen, at least on a web, on the web. So is the, is the effect of the action the same as, as the user goal at that point means, is the things that are on the screen, is the mental model of the user matching what is represented there? Are you doing, as a designer of that web page, some assumption that your user will not have? So it's, it's well before identifying a button, it's well before clicking on a button. But it's more about matching models, the models from the system with the models of the user. Uh, let me do a, an example that is probably easier to understand than the, the button for YouTube. Uh, so let's imagine that you want to subscribe to Netflix. And it, you go on the home page of Netflix and you find, I don't know exactly what you find when you are not logged in, but you find two buttons, log in and sign up. And the task is subscribe. Are you doing some, the question asks, are you doing some assumption on this page for which the user cannot know that to, how to subscribe? Because you see login and sign up. You don't see subscribe, right? Because for subscribing, you need to log in before. And then after logging in, you have to subscribe. So let's imagine this, that you have as a task, Let's, let's imagine not to have a list of, of action now because obviously you, you should have a list of action that is click on login. But uh, hmm? in that case, just to make an example of this, of the mental model, if you don't know that to subscribe, you have to log in before, but the designer of the website make this assumption that everybody knows that you have to log in or sign up before subscribing to a service, the user that the expert is trying to imagine to be can have difficulties in understanding that the subscribing button is there. Or another example, let's imagine that you have to find um, a report of how on your bank website, how many um, euro you have spent last month. 
a report, a description of exactly the money that came in and go out from your bank account. And then your website, the bank your website has three buttons in the men menu, well, two buttons in the menu that are of interest. One is called report, and the other one is called, let's say, uh, invoices, invoice. Hmm? And you are interested in your, let's say, uh, how many, uh, how much money go in or go out from your bank account. So you see reports and uh, invoice or insights, let's say insights, I like more. Uh, where you're going to click? Yeah, probably you're thinking, okay, I'm going to click on reports because I need a report on my, and then the reports are reports that the bank give you. While the statistics are under insights. You have to click insights and then you find another menu that is a report. So the answer, for instance, this, the answer for, for this question is no. Is the effect of the action different from the goal? Because I was thinking to click on report and find that the information. Instead, no, I have to click on insights to have this information. Hmm? So this clearly depends on how well or how bad is done the, the user interface and on the specific task, on the specific step that is uh, on. But this is something more, you, you know, you, you look at the page and you say, okay, yes, I, I'm, I'm sure that if I click here, I will not, I will find whatever I, I need to find. And then you after discover that you don't. But this is something that you assume, so there is an assumption in you and an assumption in the design of the system that doesn't match. So this question is try to matching these two assumptions. So this is the first question, but you can also answer and change your mind while you're doing the, the specific step. Uh, the other two questions are probably more easier to, to get. Will the user see that this specific action is available? Hmm? So it's the user able to recognize that there is a button in that page to be clicked on for, let's say, uploading, let's go back to the YouTube example, for uploading the, um, the video. Hmm? So I'm looking at the interface, I say, yes, I. 100% sure that to upload the video, I have to click there. If the answer is yes, I'm 100% sure that I have to click there. Will the user see the action? Yes, will the user see. If the user that the expert is imagining to be, starts to say yes, but there is this camera with a plus, but there is also another plus in another part of the, of the interface, and there is an arrow here, uh, I don't know, maybe. I'm not totally sure. Or, or maybe the action is not visible because you have to click and open three menus before finding the, the action that you are needed to, to do. And next step, once the user has found the correct action, yes, I have to press the camera with the plus. Uh, will they know that is exactly the one they need? So similar to before, it's not just seeing, but is also identifying. Okay, I'm 100% sure that is the camera. I'm sh but I, I see the camera, but I'm 100 really percent sure that is exactly the camera and not another button that is here, or maybe in another menu that I've discovered later. Hmm? So the action is correct, but I'm totally sure that is one that I need to press to complete my action? Or there could be other things in the application, in the page, that can give me some doubts. Hmm? So you see why this is long. Because for every step, you have to ask this question and to reflect for, for a while. It's not a question that yes or no are more, yes, I think that is this, but maybe not. Maybe the user that I'm trying to impersonate doesn't know that uh, the camera represents a video. He thinks that it represents doing a picture, taking a picture. So there are more cognitive, more let's say, philosophical questions from a while. And then after the person see the action, found the action, click on this wonderful button, uh, what happened next? 
the feedback that the user receives, it's understood by the user or not? Okay, I find the button, I click on the button, what happens next? Is something that I can understand or is something that for which I don't know how to proceed? Hmm? So again, in the case of YouTube, you have to click on the button and then you will see a window for uploading your file. So is this feedback clear? Hmm? That I'm starting the process and I need to upload or, or not? Again, not according to me, not according to us, not according to the expert, but according to the user that the, per the expert is impersonating. Hmm? So again, and this is for step one, clicking on the button. And then step two, uploading the video. Same question, is the effect, hmm? I'm making some assumption here that the user is not going to match. Like, okay, I'm asking drop and drop, but did the user know what drag and drop is? Or how to do that if the window is full screen? Browser window full screen. Hmm? And then see that action is available, et cetera, et cetera. And then next step. Hmm? And not down all of these for every single task, for every single step of the task. And then in the end, give um, the, um, the feedback to the developer, to the designer, that can um, consider this thing according to the various users, the various personas, let's say, that uh, this expert is going to evaluate it according to their perspective and see what happened. Hmm? Okay, maybe the drag and drop is not clear, so we need to add another option. Maybe the label of this button is problematic and we need to change it. So again, this is the cognitive word true. Simple, because you have to medesimate, sort of simple. You have to medesimate in a person, in a specific user, type of user, answering these four questions, and adding a list of things to do. So probably it's simpler for the person that um, give another person to, the, for the designer of the developer is simpler because you just need to create a list of things and give it to another, to the expert and say, good luck. Um, but it's simple, but it's very time consuming, hmm? again. Um, so this, hmm, the, the idea for this was trying to do um, a, a small part of the um, cognitive walkthrough on this page. Do you know what this page is? Mm, yes, no, maybe. Yes, this is the, so when you apply to Polytechnico, apparently, you go to this system in which you have to put here some information like your name, your surname, um, choose a password, uh, say with the, the score that you got in the high school and uh, the, the level of English or Italian or French or whatever language you know. And you, you go through this, this menu that is a step-by-step -step menu, essentially. So you start from the main, which is here, and then you have your data, and then you have the password, and then you have to insert your high school uh, type, and uh, if you are enrolling to a bachelor degree, uh, your high school grade, and which kind of high school did you, did you do. If you have any linguistic language-based experience, so you have a certificate or, you know, English, French, Turkish, whatever. Uh, and then you have to choose your path within the university. Okay, I would like to enroll in engineering. And then within engineering, I have to choose between, you know, my, my first choice is computer engineering. My second choice is management engineering. My third choice is mechanical engineering. Um, and then I don't care too much since the first year is in common. And then the next step is this, uh, then there is teaching material, conclusion, so it's a process, and you can stop clearly this process and re retake the process at a certain point wh when you want, before a deadline, clearly that is the date in which you are got your student ID and you can start uh, following the, the courses here. 
and there is was, uh, this is a few years ago actually, uh, this orientation project in which, I don't know if you read that, but the idea was um, that to help you, new promising student, uh, to do a, a better choice of the path of university, uh, of your university that you choose, Polytechnico is going to present a, a common path uh, for maths and physics in, in which if you want, you can also add lectures about um, design, so industrial design, and uh, urban planning. So if you want, there are lectures of maths, lecture of physics that you can take before enrolling to Polytechnico. And if you want, in addition to that, you can also choose if you want to have some lectures about industrial design or if you want some lecture about urban pl planning. Uh, so, the, for math and physics, if you're interested, you will receive, uh, I'm trying to translate this, uh, you will receive uh, a message from your professor saying, okay, there will be five lectures of maths those days, if you want, you can come. If you don't, it's up to you. But, well, for everybody is enrolled automatically for maths and physics, for planning, yeah, for planning and design, uh, you need to make a decision. You need to tell us whether you want to participate and select this date, 21st of January, for planning, or you don't want to join the lecture. And same thing for design. You can select, I don't want to join the lecture of design, I'm not interested in, or yes, I want to do, and it will be the 10th of January. So probably one lecture, or two lecture, or a very long lecture. Uh, I exactly don't know. But, so, math and physics, you will be enrolled if you're interested. Planning and design, you have to choose. You, you can do both, none, only one, or the planning on design. Uh, and we can, if you want this, not today, but this could, up to now, this could, could be done in probably 10 different ways that is better than this. But it's done in this way. We are saying, yes, it's, it's not good, but it's enough for, for, for what we are interested in. And to uh, join the project, and this is the key point, to join the project, uh, you need to pay 25 euros, uh, independent of what you selected clearly. So you go for the lecture, 25 euros. You got two, two other lectures, 25 euros. So it's really up to you. Uh, on with credit card or whatever. Uh, and you have to complete the payment by November the 5th and then print the, the receipt that will enable you to access these lectures. And then, so let's imagine that we are doing this um, cognitive walkthrough the task is subscribing to this project. Since it's 25 euros, no matter what, just uh, no, no matter what you select. So we don't care if it's planning, design, or only math and physics. Uh, you have to do this, and the action is pay. So we are in the step of the process which they are pay uh, by the 5th of November. And then there are these wonderful three buttons. Uh, one is back, one is next, mm, so back, next, and the other one is continue, uh, because clearly next, it wasn't uh, good enough. Um, so now you, you want to pay. Mm, so let's ask ourselves the, the first question. Are we doing some assumption here? And you are high school student. You've never seen this website before. You've never seen any website of Polytechnico before. You've never been there for five minutes because you came out from high school. Or you probably are coming out from high school. So you see this page. 
Are we making some, ignoring the fact that this is terrible, are you doing some assumption um, about the user? The, the action is paid. Paid is 25 euro for following math and physics, let's say, that is the default. Are we making some assumption here? At least a yes or no. That, better. I will make some assumption that a high school student cannot do. Because this probably is a 19 years old person that is filling out this. Maybe with the parent around, since you have to pay for with credit card, so maybe there is also the parent around, or at least the credit card of the parent. So we are making some assumption that we don't know, that the, the high school student may find difficult to, to understand. Yes or no, let's start from that, or maybe. Yes, it doesn't know what the MAV is, but it's fine, yeah. Um, that one. About the buttons, let's focus on the button for a moment. I want to pay, my, my activity is pay, I, with credit card, we already set up that. I have the credit card in my hand with um, 26 euro credit, so I cannot pay more than 25, and only on this website, so I, I'm safe, I need to pay. Yeah, this is, yeah, let's go over. Uh, y the user will see the action is available. You see a pay action. No, not really. Anybody see a pay action? You can also speak. Not say, let me say it this way, moving your head. Yeah, so the, the action is not visible. You, you can think about it, you can try clearly, but you, you don't know. The, the action of paying is not visible here. Mm -hmm. So you're making some assumption, probably yes. Uh, but for sure, but let's keep that first question. For, for sure, uh, well, there is a, a mismatch, the first question between the mental model and this thing here. Mm -hmm. Because continue and next, could say the same thing. One is continue and the other is continue, is next, go, go on. So they are not really different terms. Uh, so then if you come here from this path, you know that this button will bring you to the next page because it's the button that you pressed to reach this page. So you know how these two buttons work, clearly. But you have to think for a moment and say, okay, now we have another next button. We have two, two buttons to continue. Hmm? So you have to think. It's not that you cannot pay in the end, but you have to think. And as the, the, that book that was shown in the first lecture, say, don't make me think is one of the golden rules. If I have to think for one second, when I have to press to pay, I, I, there is already a problem. Hmm? So, I make some assumption, yes, probably, yes. Not only for high school students, but also for other, probably. Is the action visible? No. There is not an action for paying. So you're saying this continuous button, since it's closer to this text, it could be related to this and not to, to the, the rest of the page, since this is, uh, this, yeah, it's, it's closer to this, and this, uh, you have already seen next and previous from the previous page, so you know what happens. Yes, um, that could be a guess to, to, that could be a reasoning to, to guess which button to press, for sure. So this is, um, so once the user, so you cannot see the action, but you can do this reasoning, say, okay, probably 
the current action is pressing this button because it's closer to the text and because I know that the other two buttons, wh what they do, because I've already pressed at least six times, five times, six times, those two buttons back and next. So I, I have a knowledge of what these buttons do. Hmm? And so excluding these two and knowing that this is closer, I can guess that this continue is actually pay. Um, so once the user have found the correct action, will they know it is the, the one they needed? They, they won't know for sure. They can do a, an educated guess. Probably by exclusion, the, the only button that they have is that one. Uh, oh. And then after the action is taken, will the user understand the feedback? Well, we, we, we cannot know now because we cannot press really the button. But yes, you have to pay by clicking on continue and then you will probably see a pop-up for inserting the, the, the information about your um, credit card and then you will have a PDF with the receipt that is the one that you have to, uh, to, to, to deliver for entering this room. But if you want to do a step further, so clearly this continuous pay and this could have been fixed very easily just by putting pay instead of continue is a one second change. It's not really, uh, even without changing anything, everything else. It would have immediately make clear, hmm? will the user see the action as available? Yes, there is a big button that say pay. It could, uh, it's not, the, solu it's not the, the best solution that came to my mind. You, you say putting everything, putting a border, let's say here, right? You put a border here so that is they are visually contained in the same, so you are enforcing this, um, the closeness between the text and the button. That could help to solve doubt, but you still see continue and continue what? And if I continue, I can go back after because I'm continuing. And if I continue, and no, there are not. <laughs> you press continue, and there is the pop-up for selecting MAV or credit card. You insert the data, press OK, and that's it. And I, I think that this page remains the same with continue uh, written there statically. I don't even know if this disappear, but we, we can try. We cannot try. But this is after. But you know, if the feedback, hmm, if we think about uh, we'll understand the feedback. Well, I will have a receipt for sure. But if you think about this page, I can pay later or not. What happens if I press next? When I come back here, I will see the button continue or, or not? I don't know. Yes, you, you will, clearly. But you, you don't know, right? You arrive at this point and you are asking yourself, and now? Hmm? And this is something that should be avoided, not only in this, but also in your paper prototype, clearly. And, and in your prototype for the exam. Hmm? The idea is that you look at a page, also without doing the, the cognitive work through, and you know what to do. You don't have to think five minutes to understand, okay, you have to press this and Let's pray that is this the right button and that I don't give money to a random person or I will not lose this opportunity to following these lectures. You, you, don't, you shouldn't have this kind of doubts. You should be sure that yes, I have to press there because I'm interested. If I'm not interested, I will just go next probably or maybe a button, I'm interested, I'm not in, I'm interested and pay and I'm not interested, so that it's clear what I want to do. So there are probably, again, different way to redesign these, each of them with some pros and cons, hmm, clearly, but, but for sure it's, it's something that can be improved. Hmm? And the cognitive work through already, if you think just for question number two, give you uh, an idea that this is something that is, has some issues that can be solved clearly in some way, quick or not quick way. Hmm? From again, changing pay, putting a border, or creating a form, or doing all this thing together, hmm? 
for introducing another step that is, yes, I'm interested. And then after you start interested, there is something to say, okay, now insert information for payment. Yes. No, no, it's right if it's not disabled. Uh, because you, you, if you are not interested in design or planning, you pay for maths and physics, for which you, they don't ask your opinion, basically. Uh, probably because they do more, I don't know why, but probably because they do more days for math and physics, why for planning and design they just have these two dates, 21st of January and whatever it is, the 10th of January, uh, while for the, the other, maybe they have more slots because they are offered to everybody, probably, not probably. Typically, urban planning and design are chosen by the students that enroll to urban planning or design that are interested in these in this two. So it's difficult that uh, a person that, that enroll to mechanical engineering want to do a lecture, a single lecture about urban planning because it's totally different from their interest, right? One is mechanical engineering. So probably they, they expect less people to, to attend this lecture, so they have pick one date for, for the lecture while. I, I'm assuming, I'm making some assumption, I don't know um, how, 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 this, how many of these lecture for maths and physics, but for sure, you don't have to select a preference because you, if you pay, you can go to math and physics if you, if you are not interested in planning and uh, design. But yeah, this was just an example for this step of the cognitive walkthrough, no? To, to have these four questions, a single step, and then if you go further with the cognitive walkthrough on this, uh, you will clearly have, okay, next, and then you will have a next page which, where you have another action and you have to ask yourself the same question. So this is one of the methods that is based on expert. And the other one that we are spending these last 10 minutes and all the lecture, next lecture, is heuristic evaluation. That, as I told you before, it's expert checking issues on your design, referring to some heuristics, some criteria, some guidelines that they have to apply and know how to apply to your own design. Um, I already told you in the lab, but how we will go, we do a risk evaluation, how will you do a risk evaluation in your project? Mm? So let's say group A mm, will have these two paper prototypes and we will have group B here and group B during the lab hours. Mm, so it's fundamental for that lab to be in presence. All the groups, mm, two people of the group B will go speak to other two people of the group A and we'll do individually and separately an heuristic evaluation according to 10 heuristics that we are going to give them, and th these are the one in the slides, an evaluation of each prototype. Hmm? So let's say that the two of them, Aser and Asus, I don't know how you, but the computer are Aser and Asus, uh, are the two from the group that have this two paper prototype, and uh, tablet and the Macbook, uh, here are the two evaluators. So first go there, Macbook, and we do the heuristic evaluation of prototype one and the prototype two. Then Macbook go back uh, at place and the tablet go there and do the same. The tablet go back in place. In the meantime, the other two, iPad and HP, We'll go to the other two of the group B. Uh, I don't know which computer are, so another tablet and I don't know. Omen. Omen, there is always something new to learn. Omen, and we'll do the same thing. So iPad will go to them and they will re review the first paper prototype and then the second, they go back to place and then HP will do the same and, uh, and go back. After, hmm, so this will replicate it for every group. Hmm, so A, B, but we also have group C and D that will do the same in pairs. Um, so that each group will have hmm, two heuristic evaluation for 
each of the prototypes. And the two evaluators for each group, so group A will go to evaluate group B and vice versa, so the evaluator of group uh, A will also give not only the list of issues that they find individually for each prototype, but also a uniform. They will put together their observation and will give a rating of severity of their observation. So they will say, okay, these things here, this button here, the continue button, the text of the continue button, violates heuristic number three. And this is incredibly severe. So it's something that you have to fix as soon as possible. And you will pick the, you will do this for everything, for both prototype, and you will pick this observation and you will decide how to move on with your prototype. And same things for the other groups and same things for all the groups. So this is something that will need to be done in the lab. So group one of the lab, we will have this uh, risk evaluation, group, one group with another, and then the second group in the lab will do the same. And one hour in the half is more than enough to do these two uh, heuristic evaluation. If we, if we have 20 groups, we shouldn't have a problem in creating pairs of, of, of groups. So now I don't remember exactly if we just do A and B or we do A, B, and C, but uh, probably just A and B, but I don't remember. But you will find this in the, in the text of Lab 4 that we are going to publish this week. Hmm? Even if Lab 4 is next week, we are going to publish it next, this week so that you can start preparing for the holistic evaluation. Hmm? Finding the other group, for instance, uh, making agreement, decide who will go to do the evaluation and who will uh, present the paper prototype to the other. Everything, every, having everything set up for the paper prototypes. Ev is every piece of the paper prototype ready to be, to be used by another person? There is something that is missing. I have to print my paper prototype because I did it with the, uh, an iPad and the Apple Pencil and I need to print the things that I'm done by hand. Mm -hmm. So this is briefly how the heuristic evaluation will work and what is the heuristic evaluation? Mm -hmm. uh, so the heuristic evaluation is also called critique, design critique, because you're going to critique, to criticize in a way a, a prototype, a user interface from an expert perspective according to some specified criteria. And this, again, could be done in any moment of the design and development of a user interface. It could be done before the user testing with actual user, with your target population. Why? Because it saves efforts. Because it will allow you to skip and to solve the easy to solve problem. Because the expert will say, look, this button is, will, is problematic. You don't have to use continue, you have to use pay. So that your user, when you are recruiting user from your target population, that maybe is more complex than recruiting uh, an expert mm, and a colleague of your course, uh, in this case, uh, you already have fixed all these kind of things. So you start from a better starting point. Mm. So you can do this before the user testing with your, 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 your target population to solve problems before the actual testing and to keep for the user testing the most significant problem in the process, in more general understanding and not fine tuning some aspects. But you can also do this before redesigning. Maybe you have a product, so maybe you have a user interface version one and you want to do the next amazing, wonderful version two and you want to understand which are the good part to be kept and the part to be replaced. So you can do an expert evaluation to say, okay, yes, this part is actually is not really working. This is problematic. This is a lot of issues and I'm going to, we, we need to redesign this first because it's the one that has more issues than this other part that is easy and doesn't impact too much, has low severity for, uh, for difficulties, et cetera. So also before redesigning, if you already have something, and also to generate evidence for issues that are known or suspected, but maybe you think, maybe this page has some problem. Maybe we see a lot of errors here. We see a lot of people complaining 
about this thing. But one thing is people complains, another thing is having something to fix and a problem that is well defined according to well known criteria. Hmm? So you can do an heuristic evaluation that doesn't involve a lot of people. Uh, in the real world, you need three to five expert to do uh, a risk evaluation, so quite a lot of people. And then you need to be expert, not your target population. So you can do uh, also an application for astronauts, but you don't need astronauts to do uh, an heuristic evaluation because you need expert, only expert in the field. Mm -hmm. So that you can move from, I've heard some complaints to a list of things that are, okay, this button is, is, it has this specific issue and violates heuristic number three. Why this, this, and this? This page, this process, this set of forms has these other problems that are ABC, et cetera. And also before release, you have done everything. You have done uh, usability testing. You fixed all the usability problem, but you cannot do another usability testing after the first usability testing to check if everything is fine. Well, three to five people, expert, do our heuristic evaluation. Hmm? Quick, easy, if you are a company, cheaper than a us usability testing, hmm? and you can smooth and full polish your product before the final release. Also, it's a double check after usability testing that you have fixed in a proper way everything that you need to be fixed. Hmm? So this is very, uh, versatile instruments that can be used in many, many moments during the development. And it could be used on paper prototypes that we're going to do. It can be used on wireframe. It could be used on interactive prototypes, complete or incomplete. Hmm? You can use it really when you in, a, in every step that you want. Hmm? But you have to do something. You have to have something to, to, to experiment, to, to use. Hmm? So it, it should be at least a prototype. And so th this method, it, it was developed by this person here, Jacob Nielsen, this, that one, uh, in 1994. Um, so it's quite consolidated in time. And this person here uh, founded a company with another person that you already uh, have listened at uh, quite a lot of time now in this course, that is Don Norman. Norman and Nielsen founded a company together in the US, and they are working currently together, still together, and Nielsen came up with this heuristic evaluation that, as I was saying to you, is a structured design critique. Expert giving, criticizing, giving critiques to a, a user interface using a set of 10 heuristics hmm, that are defined by, by Jacob, executed again by a small number of people, three to five. It's enough three to five. After three to five, we, we, we will see the benefits will decrease hmm? because after five experts, they will not be able to generate too, too many insights, too many issues from your, for, for your application, for your project. And the goal is to find the usability problem in a design. Hmm? It's not to check the functionality. It's not to check that everything is fine, but to check the usability, the main usability issues on a design. Mm -hmm. And it was also called, if you look on the internet, as discount usability, because it's actually cheaper, monetary cheaper, uh, than the usability testing that needs to recruit more people, maybe you have to give a gift to these people to came uh, wh when you are not a student, but maybe when you are a company, you cannot just pick some people in the street and say, oh yes, I have a new application that I'm going to sell to $1,000 uh, next day, but do you want to try for free and fix some trouble for me? And so typically you have to give some kind of compensation to these people. And if you have to give compensation to 30 different people, it's clearly different than giving compensation to three people. Hmm? So it's, it's discount because it's cheaper also from this perspective. And which is the idea? And then I think that we can stop almost here. Uh, so the idea is this, define a set of heuristics or principle 
that are 10, give these heuristics to a group of experts, three to five, that each expert individually will look at the user interface and will go one heuristic after one another and will see if in the user interface, in that page, in that portion of user interface, one of these heuristics apply and how it apply. It's a violation of the heuristics or not. If it's a violation, they knock down the, the problem. If it's not a violation, so it respects the heuristics, it's fine, they will move on, move on to the next heuristics or to the next page, to the next portion of the page. Hmm? So each of them have this list of heuristics. They work independently. They will find different problem. At the end, and this is the same thing that I told you that you are going to do. At the end, the expert communicate, share their findings. I find these three problem about heuristic one and three. You, oh yes, I found this other three problem about heuristic two and five, and also this problem that you already have found. So we have a common problem. They put together the findings, they reach an agreement, hmm, and they rank hmm, these findings according to severity from this is extremely important to be fixed now to it will be nice to fix this and something in the middle. And then they will give the list of violation, the consolidated list of violation to the designer, to the developer that can use that to either fix the issues on the, the graphical interface, maybe it's already developed or to decide how to move on. In your case, you will have two pop paper prototypes, but you are going to use just one of them. So this heuristic evaluation will also help you to decide which one. Or maybe there are some feature in port prototype two that can be brought to the prototype one or vice versa. So uh, this heuristic will give you this also these actionable items to continue with either refining, fixing, or the next step on the, uh, on the, on your design process. Mm -hmm. And as I said before, 10 heuristics rule that are really connected to the design principle, that are actually guidelines. Mm -hmm. we, will see, we will see next week something that are similar mm -hmm. uh, to, to the design guidelines as concept, as ideas at least, maybe it's not a terminology. Hmm? And, and then these are general, then for specific context, application domains or specific goals, other heuristic can be designed, can be used, borrowed by the guidelines or created from other expert, or some heuristic can be ignored because they don't apply. Hmm? Okay, we will, Start from here, the phases that I already more or less uh, tell you. Uh, next, on Thursday, before the, the last lab about um, paper prototype and storyboard. Hmm? Have a nice day.